Hey Net Church, it's Pastor Dan here. So glad that you could join us today. I hope you enjoy the worship and the great word that we've got coming up a little bit later. So stay tuned and enjoy the service.
Jesus There is power in the name Jesus Jesus There is power in the name Jesus When you walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. And when you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. And nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. your feet and worship you. Our hearts are yours We want you We want you Come and consume God All we are We give you permission Our hearts are yours We want you We want you Come and consume God All we are We give you permission Our hearts yours we want you we want you yes we do come and consume God all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want 
want you We want you Oh We love you And we'll never stop We can't live without you Jesus We love you We can't get enough All this is for you Jesus We love you And we'll never stop We can't live without you Jesus We love you We can't get enough All this is for There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this Place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence. Let us experience the 
glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Hey, Net Church! Thank you for joining us. Welcome to you. Uh, I very much appreciate your time that you're spending out of your day to spend with us. So thank you for that. I'm Pastor Dan, and I've got a great message to bring to you today on you won't believe what he said next. And we'll get into exactly what I'm talking about there in just a minute. But first of all, before we get stuck into things, Let's pray. Father, we thank you for being with us here today. Lord, we ask you to speak to every single one of us through your word, through the things that are said today. Help us to understand and take on those things that you want us to grow and cultivate in our lives. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So, as I said, you won't believe what he said next. And what this is about is this is actually the first part in a series that we'll come back to every now and then over the coming years, probably. And it's all about things that Jesus said that might shock you or me. And we'll delve into why he said those things and explore what it means for all of us today here and now in the present. So let's start off with a statement that Jesus said that's found in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. Now, before we get there and we have a look at exactly what the statement is, it's important to understand some of the backstory, some of the things that were happening leading up to this moment that Jesus said, this statement that we're going to talk about in a little while. So if we look at the entirety of the chapter of Matthew 16, we see that Jesus is telling his disciples about all of the terrible things that had to happen to him, had to happen to Jesus. Things like being rejected, suffering, and being killed and raised to life again on the third day and explaining to them, you know, these things that had to happen, why they had to happen. Now, all the disciples were, you know, standing around or sitting around and listening to this. And no doubt 
to them, it would have been quite upsetting for them to hear about all of this, all of these things that, that had to happen to Jesus. Now, bear in mind, they love Jesus. They've given up everything in many cases to be his disciples. You know, Jesus has called them from various walks of life, their, their tasks, their jobs, their families, to come and follow him. So they've given up everything to come and follow him. They've, they're sold out. They're full on for Jesus. They've become very attached to Jesus. They're very close friends. And now here they are hearing that their close friend, Jesus, has to suffer and die for his purpose on the earth to be fulfilled. Of course, they want to protect him from this. <laughs> They've got no desire whatsoever to see Jesus go through all of these horrible and terrible things that he's saying. So one of the disciples, Peter specifically, he takes Jesus aside in this passage of scripture and he starts rebuking Jesus telling him off, basically, <laughs> he says to, and he, Peter says to Jesus, Never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Now, what Peter is really implying here is that there's no way that Peter is going to let this happen. I'm not going to let you suffer, Jesus. I'm not going to let you die on the cross. Like, I'm one of your best friends. I'm here to protect you. And, and Peter's really saying, not as long as I'm here to protect you. That's never going to happen. All right, now let's talk a little bit about this one specific disciple, Peter, who's saying these things. Peter's personality seems to be pretty spontaneous, I guess you could say, maybe a bit reactionary. He sometimes th seems to act before his brain has time to catch up and think about things before he does them. Now, here's a few things that it says in the Bible about Peter, the things that Peter did over the years that he was with Jesus and beyond. Peter's the guy who couldn't wait for the boat he was in to get to the shore where Jesus was. So what he did is he jumped into the water and swam about 100 yards, that's nearly 100 meters to the shore because he couldn't just wait in the boat to, you know, get to the shore, he had to get there faster. <laughs> and that's in John 21 verse 7. Peter was the disciple who believed what Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, said about the tomb where Jesus had been laid being empty. Peter's the one who believed that, got up and ran all the way there to see it for himself. That's in Luke 24, 12. Peter was the one who cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest when they came to eventually arrest Jesus. That's in John 18, verse 10. Peter is the one who told Jesus that he was ready to go to prison and, to, and all the way into death with him. Peter says that in Luke 23, 33. Peter is the one who gets out of the boat and walks on the water with Jesus in Matthew 16, verse 29. He's starting to see a little bit of a, a pattern here. You're beginning to see a little bit of Peter's character, the way that he acts, the way that he behaves. Peter is also the disciple to whom Jesus says in Matthew 16, 18, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. This is the disciple who's telling Jesus off, saying there's no way that these terrible things that Jesus is saying is going to happen to him. Peter, the guy who's first in and last out, the one who says he's ready to die with Jesus, the only person who actually stepped out of the boat and walked on the water with Jesus. The one who passionately defends Jesus. So how does Jesus reply to this amazing man who's telling Jesus that he won't let these terrible things happen to him? Here we go. You won't believe what he said next. 
Jesus says to Peter, Laba satari satana, which is probably how it would have sounded coming out of Jesus' mouth. That's the Aramaic language that he spoke. In English, that's translated to, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> this is how Jesus responds to Peter? This, this all passionate, all in for Jesus guy who's saying he's going to protect him? That's what Jesus says to him? Get behind me, Satan? <laughs> what? Why? This sounds completely over the top, doesn't it? I mean, Peter's just trying to tell Jesus that these horrible things aren't going to happen to him. And Jesus calls him Satan. Yikes, that's like, that's got to hurt. Peter's got to be reeling from that, surely. Now, this has, there has to be a good reason for this response. And there is. <laughs> the reason is found in the remainder of that verse, Matthew 16, verse 23. Now, the entire verse reads, talking about Jesus, it says, But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Wow, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack there, isn't there? The best way to go about understanding what Jesus is saying here is to think about it from Jesus's perspective. As we've discovered in previous messages, Jesus knew his purpose. He knew who he was. There was absolutely no doubt whatsoever in his entire being what he had to do while he was here on earth in the flesh. He was laser focused. He had a plan. He had a purpose. And he was not going to allow anything to get in the way of fulfilling that purpose. In fact, anything that tried to get in the way of that purpose was the enemy Satan trying to sabotage the plan so that Jesus could not accomplish his purpose. All of the stuff that Jesus was talking about earlier that he has to go through, the rejection, the pain, the suffering, the crucifixion, the resurrection, were all necessary steps to accomplish his purpose, to restore our ability to have a personal relationship with God the Father. Now, as we discovered last week, there is a process to everything. And if this process was not completed in Jesus' case, the purpose would not have been accomplished. Now, Jesus knows this when Peter comes and says these things to him. Jesus knows that if he doesn't complete the process, then the purpose won't be fulfilled. So Jesus knows this and he recognizes immediately that although Peter thinks he's doing the right thing by defending Jesus and wanting to make sure that Jesus doesn't go through these horrible experiences, that that would actually be exactly what Satan wanted so that the result would never be realized, the purpose would never be realized. Now, this type of thinking that Peter is using is demonstrated in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, which says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. So Jesus speaks to Peter. He speaks to the spiritual motive, I should say, behind what Peter is saying. The evil intent, the deceiving spirit. And he says, get behind me, Satan. He's saying that Peter is thinking about the physical aspect of the experiences and not about what's going to be accomplished spiritually in the process. In the physical, yeah, Jesus was going to die. However, in the spiritual, Jesus was going to break the power of death. In the physical, Jesus was going to be buried and hidden away in a tomb. However, in the spiritual, Jesus was going to tear the veil of the temple in two 
where the Spirit of God had remained hidden and would now be released and revealed. And after three days, Jesus was going to be raised physically and spiritually, bringing with him the restored relationship that we can all now have with our Heavenly Father. Today, it, like here and now in our society, sometimes we do the same thing, don't we? we? We assess what we see. We try to anticipate potential outcomes and consider the terrible things that may affect us on a natural or physical level. So here's the question. Shifting our focus from the physical aspect of our situations what things are we listening to or taking into our lives that are not helpful to our spiritual purpose? Or to put it another way, our God-given purpose. Are we listening to any voices like Peter's voice in our lives? Are we allowing anything in the physical realm of our lives get it, to get in the way of what God has asked us to do? Is there anything in our lives that we should firmly reject or distance ourselves from saying, get behind me, Satan, like Jesus did? Now, God's plan and purpose for you is spiritually sound and will accomplish his purpose. However, that doesn't mean it's going to be a stroll down easy street. <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. We just need to look at pretty much any story in the Bible to realize that accomplishing God's purpose in our lives will involve sacrifice, adversity, and struggles, to name a few. Think of people and characters and stories in the Bible like David and Saul, or David and Goliath, Jonah and the great fish, Moses and Pharaoh, Daniel in the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, Samson and the Philistines, the disciples and the Pharisees and Sadducees, right? <laughs> All of these are great examples to show us God's character, that there is a purpose, but there's a sacrifice as well. But God will be with us through every single thing that we experience as he was with every one of these people that we just talked about. He will be with every single one of us every step of the way. He will never leave us nor forsake us. That's the hope and that's the truth. The message we can take away from what Jesus says to Peter here in this story is summed up best, I think, in Isaiah 55 verse 8 and, verse eight and 9, which is a prophecy uh, that Isaiah is speaking on behalf of God. So in Isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways declares the Lord, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So we can sometimes get so tied up in our own thought patterns and actions that we forget that we're being transformed by the renewing of our mind. Our thoughts can become more like God's as we meditate and focus on the spiritual purpose that God has for us. Spending time with Him, reading His Word, putting behind us the things that are a hindrance, as Jesus puts it, or a distraction from our God-given purpose. Let's firstly and realistically understand that to accomplish God's purpose and calling in our lives, it's not going to be all rainbows and skittles. However, secondly, and more importantly, realize and know that we need to continue to look to God 
for our direction and our strength. The outcome of God's plans are always better than good. They're amazing. The result always outweighs the pain and sacrifice. In addition to Jesus, who sticks with us closer than a brother, do everything you can to surround yourself with people who will not necessarily protect you from struggles like Peter was trying to do for Jesus, but rather try and surround yourself with people who will stick with you and encourage you to keep pushing through the struggles, the trials. You've got this. You can do it with God's help. The reward is worth the sacrifice. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you're always with us, that you never leave us. You never forsake us. You're with us through every struggle and trial that we face. And we know that your purpose for us outweighs any of the struggles and stuff that we need to go through to accomplish the purpose. Help us to recognize the things in our lives that are a hindrance to our purpose, our God-given purpose, and to say to those things, no, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. And help us to fix our eyes firmly on the things of you rather than the things of the earth, the things of our situation, the things of man. We thank you so much for all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, thank you again for joining us. Uh, really enjoyed this message. I hope you did too. Uh, drop us a line if you, uh, if you like. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. There's a number of ways on our social media uh, and website that you can contact us. Um, our website is www.netchurchglobal.com. As I said on there, there's a contact form. Uh, there's also links to our social media on Facebook and Instagram. So I'd love to hear from you. Uh, also, there's a like and subscribe button down the bottom of this video. Hit those so you, uh, so you stay up to date with uh, our services and the things that we post online. That would be great. Um, we also have live weekly Zoom connects that we'd love for you to join. Come and, you know, have a great time of discussion, a little bit more about this message. We can get to know each other a bit, have some fun and pray together. So that would be great. And um, yeah, thanks again. Have a great week and God bless you. Wow, so many treasures to be found.